Hello, my wonderful little collections of bones. It's me, Glass Lotuses, your friendly and mildly eerie digital artist, writer, and cat lover. How are you doing this evening? I hope your week has been wonderful. I was able to catch a glimpse of the eclipse this week, and that was really cool. Today, I want to talk about the next god in the right hand of death pantheon and the first of the elemental gods. This pantheon has the typical earth, water, air, and fire elemental group, but I like to think of them as more than just that. Personally, I like to think of them as solid, liquid gas and plasma, but of course the other tetrad is a bit more friendly. Before I get into this video too far, I also want to specify that the art I am drawing here was actually drawn before I started recording my artwork. This drawing, and one of the drawings of the fire god, came before I started making videos for TikTok, and since I didn't have any recordings but I still wanted to make the video, I kind of faked remaking them. So here I do mimic doing the line art, and I use erasing to simulate coloring and blending, and I do actually recolor some stuff to make it seem legit. In any case, don't think that I'm faking drawing in general, I just wanted to talk about this lovely character and have some cool visuals for you, so please forgive the artistic weirdness. So if you're trying to study art off of my videos, take this one with an extremely large grain of salt. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, let's move on to the actual character. Amanita is the god of earth, nature, and decay. She oversees essentially anything organic and their journeys as they dance through the cycles therein. They are well respected amongst the gods and help to create many of the humanoid species and much of the terrain. Amanita helped craft the elves and lightlings for example, which inhabit the eastern regions of the primary continent in the story. And when the humans got a bit land grabby, she created a sentient forest to keep them out of harm's way. Amanita works closely with the gods of life and death, knowledge, and vengeance. So you could also think of her as Sena's great godly grandmother, in a sense. In her mortal life, she was an advanced and aggressive fungal colony, which spread prolifically across her home planet's megacontinent. I often refer to Amanita as she and her, but they and them is also quite fitting and accepted as they truly are a mind of many. In the beginning, Amanita was a tangled mass of hyphae, all writhing to capture their prey and share the spoils. Mushrooms painted the foggy forests and humid hills of their small world, ever spreading the spores. Amanita grew densely across the planet, and consumed most organic material that they came in contact with. Eventually, a relatively weak and unwinding weaver came along. As mentioned in our last video, weavers are extra-dimensional beings with the ability to weave and alter realities. While they are incredibly powerful, they can also be very weak. In the same way, a knot and thread can either be easy or impossible to undo. If a weaver's structure is loose, their power wanes, and once they unwind, they fall out of existence, as though they never were there to begin with at all. Intruding upon Amanita's reality, the weaver just so happened to land on the mycelia-coated planet. The weaver struggled to escape as the fungi tried and succeeded to overtake it. Amanita decomposed its body and awakened to a higher level of sentience after absorbing it. While gods do not quite have the same all-out universe-weaving capabilities as weavers, they certainly can shape their own realities to certain extents. And once their mortal lives end, they further realize this power in other realms. Prior to gaining these abilities, Amanita was composed of many minds, all fighting to live and control and consume. As their power grew, a stronger collection of personalities coalesced and broke off from the primary colony, and formed the god in our story. They compared themselves to the other gods and beings around them, and determined that they wanted to appear more effeminate. Depending on how they're feeling and what's going on, the many parts of Amanita either do or don't agree, becoming more or less discordant internally. On bad days, before the immortal realm fell, it wasn't uncommon to find them lying in bed, 
a thick coating of mycelium spreading around their portion of the realm, as their more agreed-upon form of the goddess typically depicted comes apart, and the individual personalities try to get as far away from one another as possible. Most days, however, were good, and Amanita spent much time creating new humanoid species to dot around the planet, working with the other gods to see out their visions for people, animals, forests, mountains, volcanoes, and so much more. For this particular drawing, I knew I wanted to create a mushroom-inspired character. I wanted the mushroom cap to essentially be a hat, and I kind of had this sun hat with a 1920s slinky swagger vibe in mind. While I do draw her smoking from some kind of little pipe here, my actual thinking was that the pipe had spores in it, and it was more being blown through to cast them around and take over more space. As a god and a fungus, I wanted her to have some more hypnotic mind control-like properties, but not necessarily use them for anything negative, really. In general, I think of her as a rather benevolent motherly figure, albeit stern when needed. The ears on the side of their head are meant to be little mushrooms kind of coming off the larger stalk that is essentially her body, but because of the angle a lot of people thought they were something along the lines of cow's ears or some other droopy thing. I end up hiding her ears in later iterations underneath pseudo hair type stuff. Every iteration of her that I've drawn, which to be fair is not many, always has some sort of high roughly collar, kind of like an upside-down representation of the skirts that many mushroom caps have. I didn't really have an inspiration for her color palette, aside from the fact that I personally really enjoy blue, and black and gold go well with blue. I had also been hooked on the concept of Dark Scalera at the time, and I was drawing a lot of these gods with Dark Scalera, so you'll see that in the first view as well. As for the golden blob of weirdness on her hat, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I was drawing inspiration from mushrooms like Inky Caps and Devil's Tooth Mushrooms for it, but even Devil's Tooth Mushrooms, scientists don't really know what the liquid is, so it's just something kind of attached to her cap. I imagine its texture would be kind of like boba or maybe large fish eggs, semi-firm but also kind of slippery or like one of those liquid-filled, squishy stress balls. At the point that I was drawing this, I was still using Paint Tool Sci, and hadn't switched over to using Clip Studio yet, so my tools for making cooler backgrounds were a bit limited, and I just went with something simple and swoopy. I hope you like our lovely little mushroom god. If you have any questions, let me know. I love talking about and drawing Amanita. Thank you for listening to my ramblings today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about this story, the world, and the characters within it, please like and subscribe. And if you feel like leaving a comment, that would honestly make my day. I love comments. You could also hop in my Discord if you are so inclined. In any case, have a wonderful day. Bye bye